Okay, so here are our, um, some fellow maths students from year 13, and we're just talking about um, fellow maths and, and why, um, why you might want to choose it and what our experiences, you know, for these, these students have been. So, um, okay, so um, let's just start, start off thinking about how it relates to regular maths. What's been the, what's the connection and are they completely different subjects and how do they work with each other? Um, I think the... Well, I don't know if you guys agree, but the topics are completely separate, but it's kind of the skills that overlap. Mm. So, like, when you're answering questions, your instinct, it helps with that. Um, but it is completely separate, so you do learn completely separate topics. Yeah. I mean, some of the topics do overlap, mm. so it is helpful as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. like, some of the year 13 maths is similar to year 12 further maths, so it can, like, Mm. Yeah, and the maths A level is really similar to the final maths GCSE, which was useful for the AS content. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and both of them give you ways to structure your answers and questions for either of the papers mm. and either yeah. of the yeah. levels. It's just the, I feel like the basic like understanding, it's, we have like, a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I agree. Um. Okay, so it's, it's a fourth A level, um, and how does that impact time then? How do, what advice would you give to students thinking about it in terms of their, how they think about their time? What's been your experiences? Well, you get less time and it's more work. So <laughs> it's obviously slightly more difficult to balance than three levels. And if you do like extracurriculars and that job, that's so helpful. Mm. I think it's also important to do them because you get a bit of yeah. break from content. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I think you can do it. You can do it. Like all of us are busy yeah. people in general and do other things outside of school. And I think if you want to do the course, you will want to spend that like extra two, three hours on homework every week, you'll just want to do it anyway, so. Yeah, I think the important thing is just like being consistent. This is really yeah, hard to yeah, catch up with you miss time, mm -hmm. but the actual time you spend like per week isn't too bad. Yeah, no, definitely. We all are quite busy, as yeah. Emma said. Yeah. We love extracurriculars and other things, so it's yeah. not like you can only do maths and it will take all your time. Mm -hmm. And so, and you probably you last year you did fewer electives. You don't have electives this year, so you have perhaps a little bit. But how did it impact the elective program last year? Did you did you feel you were really missing out by having less elective time, or maybe you did some electives and and further maths? How did what was your experience last year? Well, I did an elective. <laughs> yeah. Um, I took an examinated elective, which was probably not the best idea. I would definitely mm -hmm. advise on your prospective students to not take a fun sport one. I mean, I started yeah. DPQ in the room I, I prefer to do further maths than EPQ, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I stopped DPQ to focus on further maths. Because I think that's it, like, I would prefer to go to further maths lessons yeah. than do electives, so I didn't really, ma I didn't yeah. really mind. So what was the thing about the EPQ then? Why, is, why did you feel that it would be better to go to further maths lesson in your particular case rather than the EPQ? Because what, what was it about? I think it was how much further maths is actually going to help me more when I go to university and the career I want to do in the future, mm -hmm. whereas EPQ, it, in my mind, it was just a qualification. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was just something else to add on, or look, I've done this. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Some, some students would, might feel that they have to be the very best student in their class in order to further... You know, they've got to be one of the best to do maths A-level, and they probably feel they've got to be the best to do further maths A-level. What, what, what would you say to them? You don't need to be the best. Yeah. yeah. You can feel like you have to be, but that's just not true. You have to be like willing to work hard and put in the time, but you don't have to be the best at maths. Because the skills you learn along the way as well will improve your maths. Yeah, so and also you can drop further maths if you want to. It's not like yeah. you're working hard to try it out and then yeah. drop it. And some of the stuff yeah. that you learn, even like the first half term yeah. of further maths helped, helped us so much in the maths. Yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. that's true. true because we had someone who dropped it and now in normal maths ha like, ha still has those skills that they've learned. Yeah. She still has the she, advantage yeah. of having done yes. like how it's much further maths she did. Advantage. Advantage. It was, yeah, definitely an advantage. Okay, I think that's that's really great. I um I think you you've probably given prospective students some some ideas and food for thought about those things. Is there anything else about further maths that you think somebody in year eleven should be you know aware of? I would just say it's really fun. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not not, <laughs> but 